It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. I'm back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. What's up, Al? Hey, hey, what's going on, Claudia? I'm trying not to pass out tonight. And what's up, Q? What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday to you. I'm feeling real good. I'm glad you are. I feel terrible. I have never broken out in hives in my life, in the whole left side of my face, and my throat. Feels like it's starting to close up a little bit. All right, but we're going to get through the show. Uh, y'all be ready to read this prompt. That's all I got to say, okay? <laughs> we got you, sis. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, uh, if anybody in the, in the chat, any soulmates have any remedies for hives, uh, let me know. I've never had it before. It's this entire side, and I'm not trying to show y'all right now because it's disgusting. But um, it's freaking me out. So, anyways, y'all drinking tonight? No, I'm chilling. I'm off. Uh... I'm back on my health kick, you know, I'm trying to ease into my New Year's resolution, which is to cut down on my overall drinking altogether and get back to unlocking my better self, which I haven't said in a while. I'm trying to get back there. So I'm slowly easing into my New Year's resolution. Mm -mm. All right. I'm hydrating. I'm hydrating because um, I'm going to support the Sherry Shepherd Show tonight and the whole team that Sherry Shepherd Show and the whole team has been nominated for Emmys. So I'm sure I'm going to get my drink on there. And then I got a couple of Christmas parties to hit. So I don't want to start too soon because you guys know how I get. <laughs> you're, in, you're in L.A. Al, or you're in New York? No, I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, OK. They're, they're doing the parties in L.A.? Yes. Oh, nice. Is it Sherry Shepard's Christmas party? No, it's the Emmys. It's the Emmys. Oh, the, daytime Emmys. the daytime Emmys and Sherry Shepard and the entire show and crew, hair, makeup, uh, everybody is are nominated. So they're so, going to be there. The daytime Emmys are here today. <laughs> you guys okay. heard of the daytime Emmys? We're confused. I, I've We're been... thinking, are you hanging out with Sherry Shepard and crew or are you hanging out at the Emmys and Sherry will be there? Both. Okay. Yes. I've been to them a long time ago, but it's been a, it's been a minute. I haven't been keeping track with it. So, all right, we'll have fun. That should be good. Take lots of pictures. I'm sure you will, and get your party on. And leave that bar alone, Al. Don't be stealing no <laughs> bottles and make we we recognizable now. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's get into the show. Cardi B had an emotional breakdown on Instagram Live while expressing her feelings of getting played. Check this out. And you really been doing me dirty after so many years that I helped your ass. Not even a. Thank you that I got for your bitch ass. And it's so crazy that I gotta go to the internet because whenever I tell you something, you don't take serious. Now, this video was released after she tweeted Offset, you a bitch ass N word, and trust me, I'm a bleep and take it there. What are your thoughts on, emotion, on Cardi's emotional breakdown, Al? Nope. I don't like it. Sorry, I don't care who it is. It could be Cardi B, it could be Megan, it could be Nicki Minaj. This is not cool. I hate seeing uh, the couples that I root for go through breakups and then magnifying it even 10 times, making it worse by doing it online and on IG. You guys know I'm a sucker for love, especially black love. I always, I, I, you know, I, I like this. I fancy this couple. They have two beautiful kids together. And then another part that I don't like is that it's in the middle of Nicki Minaj's album release. I don't like the fact that it landed there either. It doesn't feel good. And it doesn't look good. Please take us out of the group chat. From her voice, you could tell that she is she is traumatized. But this ain't it, uh, Cardi B. Sorry. All right, Q, what do you think? You know what? I didn't hear somebody who was upset. I heard somebody who was hurt. Um, and that's when I, as a matter of fact, I was at the radio station today and my co-host Shelby Russian was playing. I was like, what's that? She's like, Cardi, come look at it. And when I heard it and when her voice started trembling, I was taken aback. And I'm going to tell you, the thing that stuck out to me the most was when she said how much I've helped your ass over the years. And if y'all follow me here, remember when the Migos dropped, you know, it was all about Quavo. You know, Quavo was the only name, and I'm not even a rap person. Quavo was the only name that I knew. Uh, it wasn't until getting with Cardi B that Offset Celebrity overshadowed Quavo. And now you don't hear Quavo and Takeoff's name anymore. It's all about Offset. But I wonder if that was some of what she was talking about when she said, as much as I've helped your ass, and if it was also money and finances. But she feels played. 
And then when you start putting together all the pieces going on with social media, I've been seeing some stuff about this Jade girl and some other stuff. It just doesn't uh, it, it, it doesn't look good. But what I don't want from Cardi being offset, if they're not going to take us out of the group chat, is for them to get back together. And then we'd be doing this again three months from now. Like either y'all need to put the house up for sale and somebody need to be moving out. Or like Al said, you need to keep us out of the group chat. I felt bad for her because, um, listen, at this point, we've all given that advice on this show, and I'm sure her friends have, about not going to social media. This is the the the, the new way of ever, a lot of people express themselves on social media, whether we agree with it or not. I wish she wouldn't either because I feel like she can protect her peace because the people that don't like her are going to be like, oh, happy for it. And as far as Nicki Minaj's album release, I, I've seen people saying that. I, I really don't think Cardi is calculating. I think she's emotional and she just... She flies off, you know, she just, she's, she wears her heart on her sleeve. Um, I think, I think she has helped Offset's career 1000%. Um, but also she stayed with him and forgave him through other publicly embarrassing cheating scandals. So nobody wants to look dumb when you give someone a second, a third or a fourth chance. And then you do it again. I'm sure there was many kind of, remember when he went on stage and, Stopped her performance before well before she's about to go perform and was professed his love and want to get his woman back. He does grand gestures, so I can't blame her for believing it. And she wants to make it work. And I, I feel bad for her. I really do. And um I, I kind of hope she is done this time because it doesn't seem like this leopard is gonna change its spots. It really doesn't. You know, um, I want to say one thing before we jump to some audience comments. Stop bringing up Nikki's Nicki Minaj's name in reference to Cardi. And stop bringing up Cardi's name in reference to Nicki Minaj. This situation she's going through has nothing to do with Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj's name should not be a part of this conversation whatsoever. And stop connecting dots that don't need to be connected. Nikki's album release don't have S-H-I-T to do with Offset and Cardi's relationship situation. But let's go to some of these comments. Nyla Jacobson said, so sad to see that they got off the internet. Um, so sad to see they should get off the internet and get some counseling. Kanisha Domino, go, however the hell, Kanisha, hey girl. Um, there are ups and downs in marriage. It's never all roses. It's up to the couple to work through it. And Lakita Wilson said, Al, he is always being dirty to that lady. He okay, so him. what does that mean? <laughs> divorce him. Leave him. If he's dirty, divorce him. Leave him. Don't go on the internet and 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 scream at him. If that's not going to make it any better, it's just going to make. She was she was saying that was the only way she could get him to listen. Uh, he said she said he doesn't take her seriously. When Serious, he's... yeah. I can see him playing. He seems like he plays a lot. Yeah, you know why? Because when you do somebody dirty and then you take them back each time, it sends the message that all like, oh, I, I could do a dirty again. All I got to do is buy a truck. You know what I'm saying? Let her sit out and cool off. That that's that's the pattern you create when there is no consequence, no true consequence for somebody doing you wrong. So yeah, I, I think in this moment, if the issues are infidelity, that she needs to leave. And I would hope the Nikki fans don't take this as a chance to jab at Cardi, just like I hope the Cardi fans don't jab at Nikki when Nikki has her issues with her problematic husband. They both have problematic husbands, and I wish both of them peace in their situation. I really do. Um, so let's not kick a woman when she's down, um, soulmates. All right, N Nene Leaks is calling out the trolls who are making fun of her looks. Take a look. So many people are reaching out to me about, uh, oh my gosh, Nene, you look great, you look amazing, you look this, you look that. Uh, we gonna age this thing backwards now. We, <laughs> we definitely ain't trying to go forward, so we gonna definitely age this thing backwards, sonny. That I'm gonna be fighting, baby. I'm gonna be fighting to the end. You hear me? <laughs> All right, let's go to the first monkey. What are your thoughts? Oh, I, 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 hell, all three of us up on this damn platform is, is trying to age back because we all don't pump and fill and scrape something in our damn faces. So I get it. We all want to age backwards. I am not mad with Nene. I, listen, I'm not mad with her sentiment at all. Um, and I'm glad that she's not doing the Kylie Jenner thing by acting as if she's never done anything. Listen, people are not blind. Nene looks drastically different now than she did when that show started. And as of lately, you know, every time we see her, there seems to be a change, you know, whether it be a fluctuation in weight or a filter 
or makeup or wig, but all in all, if she ain't hurting nobody, then so be it. And she looks good. You know what I'm saying? At least she's not poking, prodding, jabbing, scraping, feeling, and looking worse. You know, like some of her other former castmates, she looks good. So Nene, keep doing your thing. All right, Al. Um, yeah, sign me up for that age and backwards thing. I'm down for that. And you know, that's the thing that we love about Nene is her transparency. Nene has told us about all the procedures that she's had with her body as well as with her face. And that's why we miss her from television because of that transparency. And and I've told this to her a hundred times and and you look great. You look good. You've always looked good. And if you have the money to make yourself look better and that's going to make you feel better, I say go for it. But I cannot be your friend and not let you know that I looked on the Instagram and on one of them slides, somebody done stole your face and put it on their body because that, that body looked like it was real tiny. Now, I'm your friend. I'm going to tell you. But other than that, woman, you always look beautiful. You always keep it sexy. You always keep it hot. Keep up the good work. And who have I? Who are who are we to tell you what to do with your money and what to do with your cosmetics? Um, it's no secret she's got something. I think she looks a lot better. Her hair, everything. But my thing, my worry with her—not worry because we're not friends and all like that—but. With all that stuff she's getting done, she still puts the extreme filters on. Now, we all do a little softening up of things, but if you get all that work done to still need a filter, that last video that was up, listen, we got to keep it a buck here. It was giving Avatar. She looked like Avatar. Like, the nose was already small, and then she had the thing done. Look at how much, like, it's giving, it looks like that. So my thing is, I saw her in person last night. She does not look like that, but she looks a lot better than when she started out, and she looked good. I like how her hair was looking, her makeup. She done stepped all that up. Her teeth look beautiful now. All that stuff looks good. So it's like, if you're still putting the extreme filters, are you? does that mean you're still not happy with all that fantastic work you had done? Because I think well, she don't... You, there are, I'm asking for myself now. Forget Nene. There are filters that you can do a video and yes. it will thin your nose and face? Absolutely. Uh, go to your Instagram and slide on over. I'll put it in the group chat, please. But you can tell, uh, Al, you've been around her. She, you know she don't look like that in person, that video. Like, it, it, it's, it, tight, it makes your eyes look bigger, your teeth look brighter. Listen, I'm going to be transparent, too. I've used filters on videos, too. But um, with all that stuff done, like, at some point, I think she'll, I, I'm saying I don't think she need that Avatar filter. I'm, 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 I'm sitting over here laughing my behind off inside. Because I'm like, that damn Claudia Jordan just does not know how to help her own self. I'm like, Claudia, you know, after that comment, these people is going to eat you up about how you hate Onini. And so you, you you know that's what the narrative is about to be after that comment. I guess you well, say, I just don't give a damn. I don't care because, like, if I when I have given her compliments, no one ever runs with that and tells her that. No one says, Claudia said you belong on television. Claudia said you look great. They never say that. But if I say something that a lot of people in the chat are thinking, I'm a hater. I, I've let go of that a long time ago, as I'm assuming she has too. That was eight years ago, y'all. There's no beef anymore. But I cannot do my job and kiss ass to pretend that, you know, to act like it's better than it is or to, so y'all won't think that I'm hating when I got to call a spade a spade. Just like, you know what I mean? That's what we do here. We've all Al, had to talk about our friends on this show. Al, I got a question for you. Did you know Nene when she had her first face? Oh, y'all are evil. Um, yes, of course. I mean, so you knew her pre-Housewives? Yes, I knew her right when they were developing Housewives. That's when I met Nene. If you don't mind sharing, how'd you meet her? Um, through, you know, the her name is Producer Princess. Oh, Princess. Oh, no, Princess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. All right, coming up next, we are taking a trip to the pits of Florida, and later, Tory Lane submitted another appeal. He is not giving up. All right, I wouldn't either. Stay tuned. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter.
you're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff, like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Stories that we're going to cover come from around the world, around the country. Some of them will warm your heart. Some of them will make you good and mad. Macmillan and Mara. There's been an uptick in fights at Disney World. That's because it's hard to be happy in Florida right now. <laughs> Every Thursday night. Yeah, and you're having a great night at Disney World, Epcot. You've been How you going to ban black history? Here are people go through 400 years of suffering and work themselves to the place where they can become the leader of the free world. That ain't no educational value. I'm fired up. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Welcome back to TGIF. Shout out to all the soulmates rocking with us live in the chat right now. I see y'all. What's up, y'all? All right, whether good, bad, ugly, or just plain dumb, the tea is always overflowing with crazy news stories out of the state of Florida. That's why we're giving you the 411 in What the Florida. All right, a Florida man was taken into custody after allegedly refusing to pay for a Waffle House tattoo. Max Craycant was charged with petty theft for not paying the tattoo parlor. Funky, what do you have to say about your neighbor, your people? Let me tell you something. Matt is 100% innocent. I want to tell you why. Uh, the reports say that when the police pulled up to the place that Matt appeared to be inebriated. Number one, the tattoo parlor should be cited because you are not allowed to give people tattoos when they are drunk. Number one, alcohol thins the blood. Number two, uh, people being incoherent can cause them to make poor decisions when getting tattoos a la getting a Waffle House tattoo on their body. Nobody want that cheap ass, nasty ass restaurant tattooed anywhere on their damn body. And the tattoo artist that did it should have known that. That should have been the first red flag. Secondly, as many piercings and tattoos as I have on my body, I have never paid for the service afterwards, okay? The tattoo place is 100% liable. This is 100% their fault. And somebody need to run and, and go do some inspections and stuff over there because they're not running their business right, that these types of things could have happened. Tattoo boy people, tattoo boy people, y'all need to go to Ink Gods over there in, in whichever part of Florida this was and see what all the hell going on over there because this is not this man's fault. The liability and the negligence falls on the tattoo parlor, in my opinion. All right, Al, what do you think? There's nothing to say after that. <laughs> Mimi, Mimi said, I love Waffle House. This is a great idea. Mm -hmm. I bet you won't go get no tattoo from Waffle House, right. Mimi. <laughs> All right, a Florida couple has been accused by local police of leaving their children at home in small cages while they were at work. Dustin Hoff and Yuri Shia would place their kids in the cage from the time they came home from school until they left for school in the morning. Pet kids. Funky, what are your thoughts on the sick story? You know, this is particularly sick. You know what I'm saying? And the jokes stop when it comes to children. I think it's also worth mentioning that both of these people are scientists at the University of Florida here in Gainesville. And, you know, the first thing that went through my mind when I saw this story was scientists, kids, cages. Hmm. I wonder if they're doing anything more to those children other than confining them in those cages. Are they doing experiments on them? But this is sick. This is sick. And not to say that people who are highly educated are not capable of committing heinous crimes, but you would just think that people at their education level would just, would just know better. Um, they need to go under the jail. And this situation double sucks because who's going to take care of the children if their parents are in prison? But these parents need to be under the jail. The makeshift cage appeared to consist of a large, unsanded wooden enclosure made by press pressure treated two by fours. Al, what do you think about this? I'm, I'm with you on this one. It's disgusting. And, and luckily, the kid told um, his teacher 
that his dad, he didn't want to go home because he didn't want to get in the cage that his dad had made for him. So, you know, for me, I'm just like, the both of them don't need to be parents, but that mother in particular should be ashamed of her damn self for supporting her husband, putting their kids in cages. Now, listen, one child is six and one is two. The two-year-old, they used to put his her cage in the a bathroom closet and close the door because she would cry and they didn't want to disturb them through the night. Luckily, though, in this case, I feel like Children and Family Services got it right. After the student told the teacher, they called the student, they called Children and Family Services. Children and Family Services called the police and went directly to their house and found the cages. This is an all around win of how school systems work and being on the front line of child abuse and, 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 and neglect. So thumbs up for the school, thumbs up for children and child services, and very, very, they belong, these two parents belong underneath the jail. I just don't understand how you could hear your kids screaming or crying, whimpering through the night in cages, in closets, and go about your business like this. Mm -hmm. I just always try to think, put myself in the mindset of these people, like, how are y'all okay with this? Mm -hmm. All right, a Florida man is facing a series of charges after throwing an alleged object in another man's vehicle and pulling out a sword during a road rage fight. Javasia Aranka Jr. was arrested and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without intent to kill, damage to property, $1,000 or more, and throwing a missile into the vehicle. Funky, I know it's harder and harder to defend your city. Um, have you given up? What's your thoughts? Oh, we're not taking this charge. That man ain't even from this country. Okay, we is not we is not taking that charge. We is not <laughs> we not Florida is not taking this charge. I ain't never even heard the last name Aranka. I can't even pr pronounce the first name. Uh, I don't know where he got a missile from. He had a missile and a sword. As a matter of fact, not only is this man not from this country, that man is not from this world. He teleported here through some type of portal or in order to have access to a missile and a sword. We are going to give this charge to the God. Florida is not taking this. Nope, 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 nope. Al, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, we keep talking about this in Florida. This isn't the first story we covered about people carrying swords and hatchets and, and long knives. This is just ridiculous. And he look he he looks he looks like he did it. So what do we say? It's Florida. What else is there to say? It's Carmen Florida. T agrees with you. Carmen T said he did it. Mr. A-Rod said, oh, damn, he guilty. He did it. Everyone's saying he guilty just by his looks. Uh, Cash Green said, yeah, he looks like he left home with the infections on uh, intentions on cutting the heck up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Coming up next, Tory Lane's legal team is fighting for justice. And later, Damson Idris released a message for the fellas. Keep it locked. stories that we're going to cover come from around the world, around the country. Some of them will warm your heart. Some of them will make you good and mad. Macmillan and Mara. There's been an uptick in fights at Disney World. That's because it's hard to be happy in Florida right now. <laughs> Every Thursday night. Yeah, and you're having a great night at Disney World. You've been How you going to Disney ban World? black history? Here are people go through 400 years of suffering and work themselves to the place where they can become the leader of the free world. That ain't no educational value. I'm fired up. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you will get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. I don't want to jump you, but you don't even qualify to speak on your <laughs> so. I can cook. TGIF. 
live and interactive. I need to clear this up, y'all. You are one of the main ones trying to push the narrative that your girl can't cook. Al has been in my house. I can cook. I'm finna test you out right here. What are acceptable types of smoked meat to put in the collard greens? Turkey next. Oh! <laughs> Don't do me. On Fox Soul. Don't you do me. <laughs> Don't try it. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, Tory Lane's legal team is still fighting to get the rapper some form of justice. The team submitted a petition to revoke the 10-year sentence and urge the court to consider Tory's childhood trauma. The rapper's team also argued that facing deportation should not be considered because it discriminates against his Canadian origins. What are your thoughts on this story, Q? I mean, it, it, listen, it's all bogus and a bunch of BS. We can all see through it. But the lawyer, listen, the lawyers are doing what they're supposed to do. You know, the, 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 the sad part about it is, you know, Tory, his team, his family are so desperate for his freedom that they are really just spending money at this point for long shots. I mean, you, you not, what, what, what were they trying to say? Abuse in his, as, as a childhood and some other mental stuff. I don't think anybody in their right mind, jury, judge, parole committee is going to buy that. But I'm not mad for a desperate man doing what desperate people do, which is throw anything up against the wall and see if it sticks. And the lawyers are going to take his money and continue to throw out whatever you, you, it could be. The lawyers are going to take his money and say, after this fail, it's because he didn't get picked for Pop Warner football team. I mean, you know, it's going to be excuse after excuse after excuse till they see what can stick. And nothing's going to end up sticking, honestly. I think, Tori, you just need to kind of settle in and um, get comfortable and come out a better man. 10 years ain't that long of it. Uh, it is a long yeah. time, but it... Says the man that's able to still go on yachts every weekend. Right, right, right. I was, I was going to say it ain't that long of a time. I mean, yeah, it is. It's a whole decade. I mean, but... Uh, them I mean, lawyers, I get they're doing the job, but they ought to be ashamed of themselves. I, I've heard of some reaches, but his Canadian origins, his Canadians being discriminated against from being from Canada, yeah. the friendliest country in the world... Al, what do you think about this? These uh, attempts. Yeah, I mean, I think they're. I think he's doing what he's supposed to do, guys. He's in jail for ten years. He's going to try every angle that he could possibly get. And I also hear they're trying to introduce the letter from the driver as well, his affidavit. So we'll see. Um, does he have mandatory time? Does anybody know? Does he have to serve the entire ten? Because it seems like to me, with good with good behavior, he may be out sooner. But regardless of that, <clears throat> the state of California. They want this conviction, so he he's good as sealed because California is the strictest state in the union when it comes to gun laws, and it's super strict when it comes to illegal uh, gun possession. So he is just stuck like Chuck until he pays a lawyer to figure out a loophole to get him out, or he gets released on on um, good behavior or something. I get them doing this now that he's in there, right? Because he, like Funky said, you got 10 years, you got what else you got to do but to try to get out. But where was this energy from the driver that didn't want to say anything before, right? They were kind of mums the word before the trial. And and also now they're saying, oh, it was, it was really Kelsey. If I was Tory Lanez and this was really the case, I'd be saying this. I Let me get on the stand. I, or or I, before you go in, not after, yeah. They should have thrown everything at you know, but the everything at this case before. But I think there was a bit of arrogance on the defendant's part, thinking that they were going to get over on this, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. um, Stacy said he is his lawyers got Casey Anthony off, and he and he's locked up. He better learn how to sew or something. <laughs> his edge is going to be completely eroded when he comes out of there, and. Um, Max him said, like I said, mind you, that man did not even take the stand to defend himself. And uh, Joseph Savage said, Tory needs to give up the fight like his hairline. And it's funny because he didn't take the, the stand to defend himself because that attorney knew they could not ask the question, did you shoot that girl? He said no. And then he'd be in prison and add in a perjury charge to those other charges. He didn't take that damn stand because they knew he could not stand up in cross-examination. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just, I mean, you shot the damn girl. It's super unfortunate that you would, someone with such a, such a, a talent and bright career would, would make these moves. 
All right, soulmates, I want to get your thoughts on Funky's recent post. He wrote, Dwight Howard has a great mistress. We heard bleep from Miss Kitty. Does Funky have a point? How does he have a point? <laughs> you know that's right, Funky. Now that side piece know exactly how to behave. Money must be good or something must be well taken care of over there for them not to lean in on any of these. Come things. on, Miss Kitty! Y'all don't see Miss Kitty. Here, kitty, kitty, here, kitty, 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 kitty. Ah, oh, kitty, kitty. Listen, soulmate people. If y'all got an Instagram address, a Twitter address, a YouTube page, or something for Miss Kitty, can y'all please DM one of us, drop it in the chat. I I, I talked to Miss Kitty offline, but Miss Kitty is a Miss Kitty say, look. She is not about to miss out on her IHOP money for none of y'all. She say her man deposits her IHOP money on her cash app card faithfully. But real talk, and I'm not going to lie to you, I talk to him. When you're a secret, be a secret. And I'm not here to glorify side pieces. And, and, and well, here's the thing. Dwight's not even with nobody, so he's not even cheating with Miss Kitty. But when you are a secret, a side piece, or whatever, stay in your place. I can tell Miss Kitty is of a certain age, and she come from a strong stock of side piece women. Because Miss Kitty knows how to play the game. Miss Kitty continues to be a soft place to land for her man when he is going through trials and tribulations out here in these streets. Miss Kitty say, let me tell you something. You see my lights, when I flip the switch, they come on. You see my stomach, it don't rumble. I ain't never hungry. And you see this wig, baby, I keep a fresh one, fresh out the pipe from Sally's Beauty Supply off the 999 rack. She ain't about to mess up her life trying to get a little bit of Instagram fame. She is living in the ever lap of luxury. She able to go to IHOP and order as many pancakes and hash browns as she want to with the White Howard money. And she not finna mess it up and stress him out. Side pieces out there, secret lovers, Take note. Nikita Hunter said Dwight probably told us she couldn't have any social media if they mess around. Erexka Crosby said Kitty know her damn job and play. She ain't messing up ish. Dion said I wouldn't say anything either. Dwight sounds like a good time. Uh, Cherry Hunt said Miss Kitty driving folks home after the freak up. She's a ride or die. And then we also have Sherry Christian said Q want to hit Dwight. I hunch Dwight. Oh, I don't. I don't know. Not 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 because it's like, oh, he's so damn fine, but because he's because he's Dwight Howard. It, it would literally be because he's Dwight Howard. I'd hunt him. I'd hunt him. Mm. Uh, Al, do you find him attractive? Yeah, I think it's attractive. I don't know that I want to hunt him, but I think he's very attractive. Got a nice smile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never found him cute. I don't know. But nah, anyway. I ain't finna get dressed up like Miss Kitty. I, <laughs> I but see, I mean, Dwight can't do nothing with me because listen. I hell, I might not be the finest thing in the world. I might not be the cutest thing in the world, bitch. But I ain't down bad like Miss Kitty. So I might, I might not be the white taste. You know what? No good can come from this. We keep on going. So we got to go on to the next. We have an update on the story of the black Mississippi boy who was arrested for urinating in public. That boy has been ordered to serve probation and must write a book report on Kobe Bryant. Do you think this is fair, Al? I would tell them to shove it up their behind. I said it then and I'll say it again. Where is the outrage? Where is the freaking outrage? We all know that a cop showed up to the scene, was going to let the little boy off. When other cops showed up, the supervisor decided that they had to take him in for indecent exposure. An eight-year-old kid can't urinate that much. I mean, maybe eight ounces to 10 ounces of fluid at max. And then what is he being indecent about? I mean, if this is beyond ridiculous. I think, it's stu I think it's stupid, and I think it's a waste of taxpayers' money. Everybody in that state who's paying taxes in that county or that city should be pissed off just like me. All right, Q. This is absolutely ridiculous. Um, all boys pee outside. All men pee outside. 
I'm here to tell you right now, as me and Al were gallivanting up the street of New Orleans, if I had to pee real bad and I couldn't find somewhere to do it, I would have ducked off in one of them doggone alleys or ducked off on the porch of one of them doggone businesses and peed in the damn corner. It's just what boys do. It's just what we do. Our machinery makes it possible for us to pee outside. It's what we do. You know what I'm saying? Right, wrong, or indifferent, bite me. This is bogus. This is bogus. And who did he really hurt by this? The district attorney's office, the state attorney's office, the secretary down to the police chief. Everybody in there should be ashamed of themselves for this on a child and probation. And then how the hell does the book report on Kobe Bryant tie into this? Now, what I would have been all right with was they said, okay, you know, yeah, at the end of the day, even though we pee outside and it's breaking the law, we're going to make them write a little police report. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all right, we're going to make them do five hours of community service and write a book report. I would have took that. But for his name to be in the legal system, for him to be branded as a criminal and have this on him at the at, at, at that age, it's not even a teenager, it's ridiculous for something that all boys do, and it doesn't even stop at boyhood. All men do it. We pee outside. It's just what we do. And a lot of girls do it too. Like humans pee outside. And I guarantee you, the arresting officers have all done it as well. This is exactly the evidence supporting the whole prison, uh, the pipeline to prison thing that's going on with young black boys, they get them in the system early and then they do something minor when they're like 15, 16, 17. Oh, he's a repeat offender. He's been in trouble since he was nine. It's a pattern. Now we can sentence him for even longer and have him working for Walmart or whatever other companies. Uh, I'm just throwing that company out there, but don't sue us, Walmart. Whatever companies uh, use prison uh, labor to have free labor. It's obvious. Uh, that guy, T.I., said, I never thought that I could pee outside and get in trouble like that. I'm not saying I just do it in front of people, but damn. Correct. All right. This is sad. All right. Keep it locked because coming up next, Damson Idris is fed up with the fellas and later find out why actress Janelle James is under fire. Keep it locked. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie, the freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. jump you but you don't even qualify to speak on yourself <laughs> <laughs> <Fucking good. laughs> tgif live and interactive i need to clear this up y'all you are one of the main ones trying to push the narrative that your girl can't cook al has been in my house i can cook i'm gonna test you out right here what are acceptable types of smoked meat to put in the collard greens turkey necks oh <laughs> don't do <sue> me <laughs> on fox soul don't you do me <laughs> don't try it this one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. And you always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF. Yo, shout out to the soulmates, y'all. They really do know all of our commercials. Like, <laughs> What's say, it, the turtle or the... Yep. <laughs> they say, talking about turtle. They said turtle. Listen, y'all, it's paying our bills and keeping us... 
<laughs> if y'all got some cousins that work in the advertising departments or some other companies that want to advertise on our show, send us the number, tell them to get in contact with us. But in the meantime, in between time, these people is keeping our bills paid and our lights on. They're the only people advertising with us right now. So we just got to work what we got. All right. So it's either this or nothing. So let's just work with the turtle. What's the other one that come on? The turtle and what else? Uh, I, I should know, but I don't. Uh huh. Whatever uh, it is, y'all thank them people and go buy their product. <laughs> Joy said it's being it's being discussed. They just they talked about it and they have heard your call, soulmate. So something will be done in the new year. Okay, we gonna switch it up. <laughs> All right, Damson Idris is calling out black men for the unprovoked hatred of black women. Damson wrote, "I see so much unprovoked hatred towards black women today by predominantly." grown black men, especially towards our young stars that are just trying to do their thing. The compulsion to humble these women perhaps make you feel like more of a man. I promise you, you aren't men to us. A new year is approaching. Grow up. How do you feel about Damson's post? Al, what do you think? This is the biggest butt licking I've ever witnessed in my American life. He getting all the black women on his side. I'm gonna tell you, it, you're right. You ain't saying anything wrong. You're absolutely right. But this ain't gonna help Lori Harvey come back, buddy. You gotta pay that. You gotta pay that invoice a little sooner next time. <laughs> I'm just. Kidding. Not, I'm just. Kidding. Make, make a good contract coming up. Right, coming up. You could probably get her for the cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you know, I mean, he knows what to say and how it's how to say it. You know, he and what's the guy John Boyega? He he speaks like this just as well. And we know both of them are from uh, London. They're from Peckham, London, him and uh, Damson Idris. They've been very ten toes down about how much they love and appreciate black women. So for all you American black women that feel like you can't find you a good man, guess what? Guess what? I think all you have to do is list your profiles, your dating profiles in the country or London. I mean, in the city of London or in the country of England, because from where these two are from, they stand 10 toes down about the respect that all black women deserve. So hit them up. All right, Q, what do you think? Sometimes you got to know when to hold and sometimes you got to know when to fold. And in this space, they ain't going to receive nothing from me anyway. So I'm just going to pass. <laughs> Well, I like it. Uh, it's much needed. I don't care if it comes up as butt looking. I think a lot of people use black women to kiss ass and to look like they're better allies than they really are. And it'd be really um, insincere. His actions show that he's sincere because like y'all both just said, they've always showed love to us black women. So I think it should come from someone like him as opposed to a Jonathan Majors. Um, you know, I, I, I like it. I am. I get tired of it where people seem to revel and delight. Uh, at black women and their issues when we all have, well, you all have black mothers. I don't even have one I've been showing love. So I just feel like uh, we're the most attacked and the least protected. And I'm personally sick of it. So I'll take it where I can get it. So if it comes off as butt kissing. Keep, keep kissing that butt because we like it. We need it. We miss it. And that balances it out, I guess. Uh, Lamarck said he's a simp. Y'all women don't fall for that BS. And Barry Mary said he got pussy lined up for the next 10 years with that. And Chris Hoop said, yes, Damson, speak on it. All right, 50-50 over there. All right, speaking of calling out haters, recently Fabulous responded to the backlash he received after rocking a nylon cross body bag. Uh, Fabulous wrote, IG commenters had a time making jokes about me wearing a purse, which is really a cross body bag for men. But go off, bleep y'all. I like my little bag. Are y'all here for this cute bag? Funk, I know you into stuff like designer and nice stuff like that. What do you think? You know, I, I like different little things. Um, you know, my 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 good friend James Knox, he wears bags all the time. Um, and just recently I've kind of started kind of getting into the to the crossbody bags or whatever. You know, I always say on this show, men's fashion is very boring. You know, women, y'all dominate the space. Y'all have all different cuts, patterns, designs, skirts, patterns, blah, 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 accessories. Accessories has never really been a man's game, and and things are changing now. Listen, y'all, we got stuff we want to carry. We want to carry deodorant. We want to carry body spray. We want to carry condoms. We want to carry phone chargers. We need tissue for our nose. We need powder. We need we need tic tacs. We need gum. We need a place to put our keys. We need a place to put 
some food. It ain't fair that y'all get to have the bags with all the snacks and stuff with it. So I, you know, I and, and I love the fact too that as a rapper that 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 fabulous is not scared to embrace different little things. I think he looks cool with the green shoes and the bag on personally. So, you know, and, and I love the fact that he was able to laugh at his own self by referencing it as a purse. That to me is a man who's securing his manhood and who can take a joke. And, you know, I know we say, I don't think gender shouldn't play a role in purses, but let's be real. We're not there yet. It absolutely does. But in this case, I didn't think that was a feminine looking attire. I think he still looks masculine for all you men out there that are worried about that. It look it look cool to me. Like I, I think he looks fly with the I, green and the green. I like it too. Al, what do you think? Not me, girl. Nope. I understand he likes the bag, but that bag looked like a little old lady's bag, and he looked like a little old lady with it. I just don't like the bag. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't mind men carrying purses. I don't mind men carrying man bags. But to me, that was a miss. Now, I do agree with Funky. I love the fact that we have a rapper, someone who, you know, who 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 traditionally it comes from a super masculine space to kind of like wearing um, what do they call a man purse or whatever it is. But for me, this is a miss production. You can put that picture back up there again. It just was too much going on. No, the one with him in the blue suit. There we go. It's too much going on. And it looked like a little old lady who's out uh, touring Europe or something. Uh, Hillaroon said, every man wears a satchel or backpack in New York. Miss me with the sensitive dudes. Claudia's eyelash, y'all shady as hell, said, Fab is carrying a couple poppers in his bag. <laughs> and Sneaker Q33N said, get you a book bag. And Tati, uh, uh, Tati show, show you said, the only people making fun of him are non-fashionable people. Okay. I think it looked feminine. All right. Uh, according to a new study conducted by the United Kingdom Department of Education, 20 jobs are in jeopardy over the next five years due to AI. Jobs such as business analysts and management consultants, financial managers and directors, chartered and certified accountants, and psychologists, really? Just to name a few. It's also been stated that up to 30% of jobs can be automated with AI. Are you surprised? Alice, go to you first. No, I'm not surprised. You remember back in 2013, when I first was introduced to AI, when I was teaching, they said at the University of Oxford that by 2033, 47% um, of all US jobs would be replaced because of AI. They were wrong then, and it, it, it's it's evolving, but I just don't think it, hap it can happen that quickly. Uh, now, Q, what do you think? Child, thank God I damn job wasn't on it. That's the first step. Child, I skipped that article so bad it went straight to the damn list. I first thing I look for actors, entertainers, comedians, uh, content creators, and talk show hosts and radio personalities. All the things I do that wasn't on there, so I took a sigh of relief, and then I was able to ponder upon what was on there. My old career was, which was accounting. Um, you know it, it, it. Automation is the way of the future, but I do not think in our lifetime we will ever see a situation where so many things have been automated that people will not have a way to sustain life uh, financially. I just don't think that that will happen in our lifetime. And I do think that by the time we do get to a Star Trek world where things are animated, that the labor force will also evolve along with that and the education system will also evolve along with that at the same pace, creating new opportunities for, for people in new spaces. It's just the new world reimagined. But this fear of people are just going to be so jobless to the point that it's going to impact society, I just don't think we'll see that in our lifetime. Uh, I don't know if I agree all the way because I've been see. I think for entry level, like, you know, when you get out of high school or you're into high school, you get your little job at a fast food joint or something. Mm -hmm. I was horrified when I went to McDonald's in the airport and instead of people there, they only had people to just like give you the hand you the bags, but everything else was automated. They had, um, you couldn't even speak to a cashier anymore. You had to go to a panel and like hit the buttons. And I was just like, Ooh, that's five jobs gone from a teenager or something that could be, you know, making a little money during high school. And then I'm seeing other things. Um, I'm a little nervous about it. I'm a little, maybe I'm a little more paranoid than you are, but I'm a little nervous about it because 
A big part of the strike was AI, them being able to use you once and then using your image to create um, an actor, you know, a character with your likeness. And I think it's just a matter of time because it seems to me that the way corporations are going, well, they've always been this way, it's getting more and more where there's no middle, right? There's the top person that makes a hundred billion dollars and then there's five people, there's like the little workers that are just like scrambling for the pennies. And as far fast as our population is growing, we're at seven over seven billion now. I remember growing up, it was two billion. I don't know, man. I'm a little bit nervous. I hope you're right, Q, because I'm nervous about it. I really am. We'll be fine, sure. <laughs> if not, right. again, we'll just have to evolve. We'll just, you know, let's just say, for instance, hypothetically, they if you know today or tomorrow, this what we do for a living on media became, you know, AI. We just have to go on the road and do it. It would create, I think, a larger face-to-face -face market. I think it'll create a market where people want human interaction. I think that 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 the weird people will will create um, off the grid living. Come over here if you want to live normal and not be in a super automated society. I think there will always be a space for humans and normal human interaction. If y'all get a chance to watch the series of Black Mirror of the first two seasons, the last two seasons have not been that great, but the, it was very much like where we're heading and it's it, it got me thinking and i'm seeing some of the stuff come to fruition now with ai all right y'all keep it locked because coming up next find out why janelle james is under fire stay tuned my mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. stories that we're going to cover come from around the world, around the country. Some of them will warm your heart. Some of them will make you good and mad. Macmillan and Mara. There's been an uptick in fights at Disney World. That's because it's hard to be happy in Florida right now. <laughs> Every Thursday night. Yeah, and you're having a great night at Disney World's Epcot. You've been you going to ban black history? Here are people go through 400 years of suffering and work themselves to the place where they can become the leader of the free world. That ain't no educational value. I'm fired up. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to the show. All right, Abbott Elementary star Janelle James is under fire after a two-year-old video of a surface of her discussing her son's private areas during a stand-up. Janelle said, I didn't know he had a bleep. I was sitting on the edge of my bed and he ran by me from the bathroom. I guess he forgot his towel or whatever. And I was like, what the bleep was that? Like, it blew my mind. I said, that's a bleep? What? That bleep needs to get a job, okay? I think she means penis. Uh, do you think she was out of line or people being extra sensitive, Al? Um, that part was hilarious. I'm sorry. That part, I don't think she was out of line. We've all been in our homes and had to run past one of our siblings or one of our parents in those type of situations. I think where it got cringeworthy was when she started talking about when he was two or whatever and she would change his diapers, that she would play with his little wingy wingy, his little ding -a -ling. And like that part, I know for a fact she's got to, got to think in her head now that it didn't age too well, and especially not in the environment that we're in now with 
you know, abuse and, and pedophiles and all that conversation. And also on the heels of one of our other favorite comedians dealing with, you know, abusing kids and stuff like that. I know for a fact that that one she wished she could probably believe take it back. But the first part, the part that we covered, I thought it was hilarious. All right, the soulmates with their shady names, I have to read. Mayor of Horse Pasture, Virginia says, mm. yeah, Janelle has been exposed as a weirdo. Um, Q, what do you think? You know, for the soulmates out there that, that don't know what Al is talking about, the second part of the joke, and I'm paraphrasing here, she made reference to playing with the songs Wee Wee like a guitar. Oh, yeah. That's um, right. And when I was at the radio station today and I was reading it, I kind of you know did one of these. It was... It just kind of made me jump, and I was like, Ugh. "Now you know, I'm not one of those people that's quick to run and say cancel somebody or whatever." But I'm not gonna lie; this did make me pause and say, "What kind of sick bitch uh, writes a joke like that about a child? Uh, about about a, a, a child? You know what I'm saying?" I was like, "And not just a child, a baby." Um, she hasn't done anything wrong. I just think, you know, sometimes we tell jokes and we don't know where to stop. We go too far. Uh, I think she just went a little too far for the laugh and uh, it didn't land well. She didn't use her discernment on this one. I'm not ready to nail her to the cross just yet because I like her a lot. Um, I just hope that, you know, we don't get any more hints of anything super weird like this from Janelle in the future or nothing else resurfaces. But I'm willing to give her some grace in this situation and just say, you know, she she took a joke a little too far. RJ said she was talking about playing with the penis. That's not a joke and not okay. Miss Hollywood said, who plays with their child's weenie? She's sick. New Orleans girl says, uh, and she portrays the school principal. She needs to be canceled. And lastly, Hot Commodity 77 says, she has always had dark humor if you ever saw her stand up before. Um, yeah, I guess with comedians, you, you gonna win some, you gonna lose some, you gonna throw some stuff against the wall and it's not gonna fly. And this is definitely something that is not gonna fly. I'm wondering though, when you write your routine, cause comedy is not usually off the cuff, right? You had to like put some work into your act. When she wrote it down, uh, usually you write it by, Hey babe, what do you think about this joke? Or did no one say, not only is it weird, it's not even, to me, it's not that part ain't funny. Mm -hmm. you no know? cancellation. I don't think so, but hopefully just. No more with the playing of a guitar of a little baby's penis. We know. <laughs> Yesterday was an emotional day during the closing remarks of Jonathan Major's domestic violence trial. It's been reported that Megan Good was spotted wiping her tears with a piece of tissue while Jonathan's mother consoled her. What are your thoughts, Funky? I, I don't. I don't know what to think about this anymore. I don't. I. I... <laughs> I'm more concerned for Megan than I am Jonathan Majors because I just don't know what she's doing. I just don't know. You know, I just, there's so many unknowns about this relationship. Have you known him for years and that's why you're so close to him? When did y'all start dating? When did you fall so deeply in love? Are you, are you a, a, a rent a date just for optics for this thing? I just don't know what to think anymore about this situation. So I'm just going to opt to think nothing. I don't care. Go away. I, I also wondered with all the stuff that came out last the other day, was she finding out about that when we were like had he had her fool like i i don't i didn't do that and 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 then she's hearing those messages with us al what do you think about this you guys know how i feel about this situation and megan good being a part of it i think it's a circus this is clownish at its best and the timeline ain't timing and, and i I just don't like it. I don't like the tears, the crocodile tears that they both had the other day in the courtroom. She's crying again today. It does not feel right. I don't care what anybody says. You, you, she could be that whole Cleopatra that he was texting. It does not feel right. It just doesn't. And didn't they both realize that the nominations for the Golden Globes and Oscars have been long past? So these crocodile tears have got to go in the courtroom. All right, I guess once again, we will hear more from about this because it's up, but it's almost over, you guys. We're close to the finish line with these two. I want to thank my co hosts, Al Reynolds and Funky Daneva, for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Uh, stay tuned for Street Flavor. Y'all got any plans for the weekend? 
I am hosting the fifth annual Jingle and Mingle down here. So it's a big event that the who's who of Black Miami throws to rich Black people. A uh, beautiful event to raise money for schools. So I am the, the honored host this week. So I got to get my tuxedo tomorrow and get real cute, go get my weave done and, and all that good stuff. And yeah. I'm being uh, honored on Sunday at the Four Seasons by Bella Masters. All right, Bye, have fun. See you on Monday.